Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Under Construction. This is episode 244, Converting Coaches, number 7. We're going to be talking about the storage car, but we'll be working on more things south of Olive, south of the Olive South interlocking, and building some highways and roadways and things like that. But, anyways, okay, I honestly am not entirely sure what to say about the storage coach, because... It's the most boring coach there is. It's we needed a way to access all of our junk that wasn't in or you know without having it all in boxcars. We needed a way to store things that wasn't in boxcars because to get into a boxcar you have to stop the train. And the simplest solution, the thing that would have been most sensical would have been like a baggage car because we wouldn't have had to tear out all the seats. But we tear, we tore out all the seats in every car. So that wasn't really that much of an issue. I don't know what we did with all those seats. That's a really good question. We dragged a bunch of them around for a while. We ended up selling some. Most of them we just sort of left somewhere. Somewhere along the rail line somewhere. There's a giant pile of seats from coaches. We didn't take them out all at once. So it wouldn't be like there's seven cars worth of coaches stacked up, but that's, it's, they're, they're somewhere. They're somewhere. We didn't keep them. We didn't repurpose them most of the time. We used, like, some of the upholstery, some of the metal, but we definitely did not use seven cars worth of extra coach seats. Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't know why I never thought of that. It's been years. And I never even questioned what we did with all those seats. I don't know, maybe they were just chucked out of the side of the train one by one. Maybe there's a trail of coach seats down somewhere. You can see where the zombie train went, based on the seats we left behind. But, I digress. The storage, yeah, the storage was the, the car that we slowly stole everything from because it was storage. Uh, we literally, we, we took windows... We took pieces of the roof on occasion. We took uh, flooring sometimes and wall panels. It was it was the most cobbled together sort of coach. And I don't mean cobbled together like we took a bunch of nice things and put them together. I'm talking like 20% plywood. I, I'm, I'm saying that the roof, about a third of the weight of the coach, about, you know, 5-10 feet of the roof was held up only by this makeshift truss that we built out of 2x4s that was anchored into the walls, and the bolts for that went all the way through to outside. Uh, it was not in a good position, and at one point there was a whole section of roof that was just tarp. Actually, some of it might still be tarp. I don't think we ever fixed that, because it stopped leaking we stopped caring. Uh, it's fairly simple when you think about it, because it's, it's like a shed. It was a shed. It was our shed. It was where we just threw all the extra junk we didn't want to deal with. When the coach was full, uh, you know, while we were on the road and we were putting stuff into the coach that we accumulated, because it would go in there first, so, you know, just in case somebody needs it, we would establish, okay, what should stay in here so that we can grab it, and what needs to go into the boxcars, or what needs to get traded away or sold away, uh, just generally gotten rid of. Because... There's not all that much space in there, you know, there's, there's some space, there's some room, it's a coach, uh, you would say there's plenty of room, but there's not, it fills up, um, it, it filled up quite quickly, as a matter of fact, uh, oftentimes, because we would just end up with so much junk, you know, think about, think about, uh, think about hoarders, right? Think about how much junk they end up with, just in general. Because we were the hoarders. <laughs> we were the hoarders of the zombie world. Because uh, and because we would trade for all this stuff. And we would often... Uh, we would often sort of... Not the opposite of lowball people... We would be far too generous with what we were giving up, and some of the people on the crew would sometimes be annoyed. But 
fact of the matter was, we were usually the ones with all the supplies, and they were the ones without. So it would be like, oh, you need this lumber, you need this whatever, you need, you know, just sort of throw stuff at us. You need all these chairs. We found them on the side of the railroad tracks. Uh, but, so we would just take the stuff. You know, we would give them food, we would give them, you know, water or, or you know, wire or uh, pipes or whatever they needed. And in exchange, they'd give us whatever they had. Uh, whether that be, oh, you know, I have this telescope, which, you yeah, know, that can be useful. Uh... I have, you know, this, uh, you know, these these rifles, maybe, because that was the other purpose of the storage car. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, you know, take these. We don't have any ammo for them, but, you know, take them. You, you might find use for them at some point. Um, and then... I'm trying to think of some of the other oddities we got. We got a lot of bottles. We got this huge collection of, like, milk bottles, soda bottles, beer bottles that we ended up doing our best to melt down and turn into windows, which, that was an endeavor. Um, but, yeah, there's a, there's an off-color window in the storage car. Yeah. It's sort of this brownish, because it's made out of beer bottles. But, you know, whatever it was. You know, even, like, oh, here's this thing of nails. Here's this giant crate of nails. And that was definitely useful, but it takes a long time to use a crate of nails. Uh, and so they would just get stashed along with everything else that's in there. It just full of stuff. Full of stuff. And it would fill up and we'd say, oh, we have too much stuff. You know, here, you either want some more stuff, we'll, we'll give you whatever, uh... And and the rest of it would get sorted into boxcars. And then some of it would get taken back to Quonset or wherever we were currently uh, wherever we were currently based and offload tons of stuff. And I mean literal tons of stuff. Um, Uh, yeah, but the the rest of it, okay, so the one part that did get a little bit of love is we had to build a place to store all of the guns, and we generally, we weren't gun hoarders, we tried to do our best to, obviously, I, I just got over saying that we were totally hoarders, and yes, we were hoarders, we were not specifically gun hoarders, we were, uh, we were not... Uh, we were not specifically not gun hoarders, because we had a lot of guns, but it wasn't something we, w we went out of our way to get and get more of, because basically it was the idea of if we have enough guns for everyone on the crew, you know, for everyone to have a rifle, and for most people to have a pistol, or at least half of the people to have a pistol uh, of some kind, if we can do our best to standardize what we have so that we have rounds when we get when we get ammunition we have an ammunition for every gun but at the same time we need to be diverse enough so that whatever ammunition we get somebody can use it or something like that you know it, we we had to walk a pretty fine line with how many uh you know how big our arsenal was and that became tricky that became troublesome very quickly because it was like where do we put all these guns and so we ended up building these makeshift shelves and these makeshift racks. And if you ever see, you know, military movies where they run into the armory and there's a line of guns and everyone grabs one off of the off of the, the stand and then you run out into action, we built one of those. We built a thing where we could stand up a bunch of guns. It was a little bit haphazard and it was really loose because it was because it was designed for whatever gun you put in there. Uh, but it was there, and it had, we had 20 on one side and 20 on the other side, which meant 40 rifles. They were, you know, they were, well, rifles, shotguns, uh, just what you would think of as a primary weapon and not as a secondary. We had about 40 of those in a rack, or, you know, in two separate racks, one 
you know, 20 and 20. There were more weapons that were squirreled away in a boxcar, but those were the ones that we didn't have ammunition for. We then had the crates of ammunition at the other end of the coach for the sake of you're not standing in front of the gun rack grabbing ammunition, first of all. Second of all, okay, it wasn't always at the other end of the coach. When you had too much stuff, it was the thing that got dragged slowly forward. So when that got in front of the gun rack, that's when we knew to, to clean out the coach. But the basic idea was you don't stand in front of the gun rack when you're getting ammunition because you're going to be in the way of other people that are getting guns. We did try to always keep a walkway down the coach, but that really didn't work out too much. We wanted to put another door in, just in the middle, but that also was not smart, because then you're leaving the cover of the train, uh, which most of our battles were fought from within the train to outside of the train, at least when it dealt with, uh, at least when it dealt with other people. When we dealt with zombies, it was wherever. Uh, but with people, we always go back to the train because it was the most defensible position and also because it meant we'd have a lot more firepower. It was, you know, in some cases you might think, oh, that's really stupid, you're just leaving them back to your train every time. But number one is if, you, if they see you've got the train full of, you know, another 20 people that all have guns, they're probably going to turn around and leave. Uh, and if they aren't, if they are a group that is too large to want to do that, then you're going to need all those extra people anyways. So, uh, and, you know, if it's zombies, yeah, you can flee back to the train, but then you flee back to the train and leave. Uh, you generally don't linger and kill all of the zombies, because if you don't have to, it's a waste of ammunition. Uh, there were plenty of times where we did sort of clearing procedures, and that used a lot of ammunition, like a crazy amount of ammunition. Uh, even... You know, when you had to do it with large groups, because it's at least one shot per zombie if you hit them in the head. You know, it's one it's one shot per zombie if you hit them in the head. If you happen to miss, that's a wasted bullet. If you hit them anywhere other than the head, you probably just wasted a bullet as well. You're not going to do very much unless you're hitting them in the head, so you have a lot of misses. And it's not like you can run out and grab more... Or no, it's not like you can go out and scavenge the things that you missed. You're not playing with nerf darts. Uh, so, we didn't want to hypothetically waste ammunition. You know, we didn't want to put ourselves in the situation where we could miss a lot of, uh, a lot of shots. Even if it would potentially mean getting rid of some more zombies. Because if they weren't being a bother to anybody right then, then there was no reason to spend our time on them, basically. It's... It was... You know, there were there were a lot of balances that we had to have. There were a lot of choices that had to be made. You know, usually when we ran across a horde, it was, you know, let's deal with this and get away from it. Or, you know, let's... Uh, shucks, what was I saying? Let's, you know, let's deal with it here and now, but that's if we run across them. If they run across this, the expedition team, for example, then that's a different story. Uh, then you would... Then, you you, you know, you'd, re you'd take out what you can, you'd retreat back to the train, and you'd probably leave. Probably. Not always, because sometimes we did want that area, and leading them back to the train was the tactic, A, to get more people, and B, to have a very defensible position. But, you know, that's that should, that should be not a revelation to anybody. It's Obviously, that's going to be the best place to go. It's going to be the best uh, place to be. And, you know, when you're coming back, then you'd sound that alarm, and you'd have everyone run for... Uh, you'd have everyone run for those weapons that were stored there. And we'd probably run out of ammo. The other idea was, you know, keep the ammo not right next to the weapons. There was a there was a thought that went into safety initially, so you can just like lock the weapon, lock the ammo box. You can just lock the whole coach if you really need to, but lock the ammo box. I'm not sure why you necessarily you'd have to. Uh, generally, if some generally if somebody's alive at that point, they already have a weapon. 
uh, you're not, yeah, I don't know, That's a, that was a whole other thing, it ended up not really coming to fruition or being consequential, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week. Train Man out.